War Tales 1.0 is finally there, and I already spent over 30 hours rediscovering the game. Having a blast so far, while I also see a lot of people struggling to survive in this pretty harsh environment filled with challenges. So today I would like to dedicate some time to make a new ultimate beginner guide in which I share everything you need to know to get started properly in the game. From choosing your right difficulty, to managing your own crew, choosing the right starter traits, talk about all the different professions, how you can do side hustles to make a lot of extra money, talk about late game progression, to not just survive but thrive even on the highest difficulty in the game. So this will be your ideal starter guide, while I'm also going to include some advanced tips and tricks so even for returning players this is going to be very helpful as those changes which you make will have a huge impact towards the end game so a lot to talk about i'm going to include timestamps in the description so you can check out all the different chapters while i do recommend you to stick till the end as we're going to cover it all ladies and gentlemen without further ado let's get right to it before we get started, I want to quickly thank Shiro Games for making these videos possible. It's an honor once again to make videos for a game which I really enjoy playing. So let's start off with the world setup. Choosing the right difficulty is pretty important, especially for your first playthrough. To begin with, our starting companions. I definitely recommend you to go with the first option, Apprentice Friends Looking for an Adventure, as this one gives you a pretty nice variety of different crew members, which you can also give different types of professions in the first days. You will have a brute which can serve as a nice AoE or area of effect damage dealer or have a mace and a shield which I always take it for. A swordsman with also either a two-handed sword or a sword and shield so you can go with two tanks. A ranger which can deal with enemies from behind. An assassin while you also have an archer which can deal with enemies from afar damage dealer. It really depends on your playstyle right here, while some of the perks or disadvantages are less interesting. The second choice you will have to make for your destiny is a bonus or a perk. Reduces the speed at which the troop fatigues stack, which means you can walk longer. Always, which is pretty good. Experience gain in combat increased. Influence after combat increased. 10%. It's okay, but after you've reached maximum level, this perk will be entirely useless. So I don't recommend you to go for it. You can get experience pretty quickly if you know what you're doing. Show incredible resilience is also a pretty nice one if you want to have extra HP. Critical damage increased by 10 is another perk which you can take. Well, I don't really think you should go with this one as some of your characters are not going to focus on dealing damage. So this could be quite useless for like half of your crew. Quick learners will give you bonus experience. So once again, if you know what you're doing, experience gaining is super easy. So I would suggest going for something which benefits all your characters all the time. Either the walking or incredible resilience to make him a little bit tankier. If they had a flaw, it would be... This is something you're going to carry with you during the entire game. So think twice. Reduces the troops happiness by one during each rest. Don't go with this as you won't be able to reach your maximum happiness will prevent you from getting a lot of bonuses, boosts in different ways. I'm not going to spoil, but critical hit reduced. Don't want to go with that as some of your companions heavily rely on it. Danger during rest increased. Don't do this because it will mess up your survivability sometimes. Willpower reduced by one isn't that bad as you can boost the willpower of every single companion. While I like to go with this debuff, decrease your carrying capacity as we're gonna have horses in the game which also have a lot of carrying power. Then we have the exploration mode. You have either the adaptive or region locked exploration. With region locked you're basically limited to one area which you cannot leave until you are powerful enough or met certain requirements. Once you're strong enough for the next biome and start progressing there you will become stronger and stronger. But if you want to revisit an older place, these are also easier. So they kind of lack replay value as you don't really feel like you want to go there again. While with adaptive exploration, you can check out the entire world of War Tales. Everything the game has in store for you whenever you want. So that is awesome. If you get tired of a certain location or maybe you just want to do some gathering somewhere else, 
resources also respawn after a certain period so if you quickly revisit all the different places you can make farming a lot more efficient more replay value more fun in the long run last but not least we have the starting options you can start in a different region depending on your progress in the game i recommend you to start off with the tiltron county though as it's pretty central on the map you will have most zones around it and i have a very very good starting run for you guys to get started properly and get ready basically for everything the game has in store for you so tiltron county it is while the vitruz province is also a nice one combat difficulty i recommend you to put this on experts survival difficulty on exports but yeah just go with novice or experienced if you're starting first time and you can always change this in the settings whenever you want while the safe mode is pretty important i would put this one on limited as it allows you to have one save always go back to a previous location or situation you best want to save before combat, let's say, if you're going on this one. You can also go with free if you want to just explore the game in many different ways on one specific type of progress. While Iron Man is your hardcore mode, which I would recommend if you're experienced in the game. While it can also break your save if you encounter bugs, which I haven't seen yet, but it's um, definitely something to think about. If you enjoyed the video so far, would be nice if you can leave a like. Now, for our crew composition, the customization of it, this is very important as you can literally take these guys all the way to the end game if you make the right decisions in this very menu and of course take good care of them. Let's start off with our horse. I decided to call this one Roach as I just really like the Witcher series, but um, for each character we also have to choose two positive traits and one negative trait. For the horse, I recommend you to go with Brawny to increase its constitution, which basically increases the HP of the horse as well as its carrying capacity. Then we're gonna take Stucky to further increase the carrying capacity. So now we're basically eliminating the debuff which we got in the very beginning when setting up the game. As negative trait, we're gonna take Unlucky. So we will reduce the critical hit chance of it by 3%. While we're not gonna use the horse in combat, so this really doesn't matter. While you wanna be careful for things like Glutton, as it will cost more to feed your troops every rest. And if you have multiple characters with this, it's gonna become a problem over the long term. You won't be able to manage all the food required. Drunkard is even worse. First of all, you don't want to have a dragon horse in your crew, but consuming alcohol every meal is going to become very expensive as well. Then for our characters, the traits right here are much more important. So this is my first guy, Crixus, a sword and shield guy, which we could also give a two-handed sword. While I recommend you to go with sword and shield to begin with, as it will give you more forgiveness. Increase your chances of survival, especially early game. You can always re-specialize later or give him a two-handed sword whenever you want to try it out. But to let this guy deal more damage, I also take the Wrath ability so it can finish off enemies a lot easier. For your characters, you also want to take two positive traits and one negative trait. You definitely want to follow this guide. Don't go for random. Bloodthirsty is going to be awesome if you want to increase the critical hit chance. High damage dealers for either frontline or long-ranged assassins, archers, stuff like that. Brawny will increase your constitution. So once again, carrying capacity and HP. Epic for horses, a little bit good for tanks, while for the rest, it's not recommended. Strong increases your strength, which scales up the base damage of your basic attacks and abilities for characters who have swords, shields, uh, maces. Nimble increases your dexterity by 5%, which scales up the damage of the abilities from assassins, archers, and stuff like that. Hardworking increases your experience gained. Quick increases your movement. Also pretty nice to move quicker in combat. Volunteer reduces the wages paid by 10%. Used to be 50% in early access, so it's no longer recommended. Thick skin increases your base guards. A little bit nice for tanks, while you can already increase this a lot with good armor. And then also stocky for carrying capacity. Only take this on horses. So with Crixus, we're going to take uh, Bloodthirsty to increase critical hit because we want to focus on dealing a lot of damage with this guy in the long run. Also strength. Now for the negative traits, you want to be extremely cautious about this as well. Glutton 
don't go with this as it's going to cost you a lot of food in the long run, especially if you have it on multiple characters. Same counts for pickpocketing. It's going to make you poor in no time. Lazy. Get less profession experience. This really doesn't matter, especially if you switch professions all the time, which I actually recommend with certain characters. Stupid. So this is actually a pretty nice debuff as it's only 5%. And once again, if you know what you're doing, you will get experience pretty quickly. Loafer will reduce your carrying capacity even more. Not recommended. Reduce willpower, also not recommended because it can prevent you from instantly dying with a certain character. And don't go with the drunkard as it's going to cost you a lot of money, a lot of alcohol. Save that for special occasions. So we're going to go with stupid. Next up, we have our assassin, Dirge. I made him look like a guy in my neighborhood who has exactly this mustache. But for the people who played Skyrim, remember Dirge from the Thieves Guild? Anyways, I also gave this guy Wrath, so he can take down enemies a lot easier. Since he's going to be a backstabber, take down enemies from behind, this is going to be the ideal utility ability. And then as traits, we're taking Bloodthirsty to increase the crit chance, Nimble to increase its dexterity, scale up the base damage of his abilities and also stupid to once again get yeah just five percent less experience i also decided to make a lady because otherwise we're just gonna have a sausage party um brawny so she basically gets more hp i think that would be pretty nice to have as a tank strong to increase the strength so of course we will deal more damage and also stupid to reduce our experience gained a little bit while as utility i also took first aid so if somebody falls in battle we can heal them with this one which will prevent them from dying and i think it's nice to have one heal in the front line and a second heal on aragorn right here we have for the back line so uh, he can also heal enemies who get injured big time also has bloodthirsty for the crit chance nimble to uh, scale up the damage of his abilities and stupid so that is it for the setup i know already a lot of information but if you do this right trust me you're gonna have a lot of fun in the game because it will make everything so much easier all right camera back in the top so you will have the best overview of all the ui elements so this is where we start right now we can start free roaming in the world and the ui elements might be a little bit overwhelmed from the beginning i mean we've got our happiness right here our influence fellow points food we're gonna cover all that during the series don't you worry about that so the first things first um you can just free roam and you're gonna have to resolve combat right here this is what combat it looks like in war tales we've got our four characters which we just created and these are our enemies you can already just left click and hold to um, drag them to another location to yeah have better positioning on the battlefield which you should always do while right now we just want to have our tank in the front line you can see that this guy has an exclamation mark so if we hover over it or go to the Time stamps right here, let's say. You can see when who gets to play. So first, this poacher gets to play. So what we're going to do is make sure that it cannot shoot as it's an archer. If it's not engaged in combat, it's going to hit me with arrows. So I'm going to just take my tank and move to the front line and hit her. So now they are basically clashing. They're engaged in combat. And if I end my turn, it's her turn and she can just punch me in the face and that is basically it. She will not use her bow. Same counts for this hoodlum. An assassin with a dagger probably deals a lot of damage. So what you want to do is just take another tank, engage, hit it. So you will lock it in position and it cannot really escape from it. Since we have a shield, we will not take a lot of damage. And with each character, you can just do this little move action. Then you can use your base ability. So right now we're just going to shoot this one deal some nice damage and um, then we just end turn so we all play turns until you see this yellow icon which is the end of the round then the turns reset and then all the characters can play again until combat is finished so this guy gets to play as well so we want to be a little bit careful for him so what i'm gonna do is yeah just go to this one i want to hit the archer so probably dirge is gonna get attacked right now by the hoodlum look at that so he lost all his armor because of that hit. Pretty evil. So um, we want to look out for what is going to happen right now. Ah, so the poacher gets the turn. But first we get two turns. So what I'm going to do is take my archer, just bring it closer to Crixus, and we're going to support him in battle. We're just going to 
shoot once. It's not dead yet. Now I can use my Wrath ability or the regular slice to finish her off. I'm going to use the Wrath because if we kill her, and we did, we can start moving again. We can move to this rogue and we can hit it in the back. If you stand behind enemies, you will have damage bonuses, a lot of detail in this game, which you should just all read and explore on your own. With this guy, we get to play. So we just stabbed her, and we also have the Wrath ability, which allows us to finish off an enemy if it's on low HP. So look at that. Before she gets to play, she actually dies. So now my opponents are even scared. They are demoralized and want to flee. So killing enemies will raise your morale meter to claim victory faster. You will also deal more damage after a certain point if your units become galvanized. So um, right now we just stand back. So now we just stood behind this guy, finished him off and voila, that's a wrap for the combat. We just won and ooh, we looted two daggers. So we're gonna repair our armor. You can always just right click on a character as well to see the armor they have, you can repair it right here. Well, the repair armor all is pretty quick. Well, right now I'm just gonna right click Dirge and we're gonna equip one of these daggers. So this was five plus three, a lot of extra damage. This is four, so it's less. And we're gonna start moving towards the Northwest. So here we have a stables. So right here we can interact with the people. We can even inspect barrels and items to, for example, steal from them. So what I'm gonna do is assign my first profession to Dirge. Uh, we're gonna talk more about the professions later, but uh, now Dirge can steal items. If I steal something, this will give us a wanted level at a certain point. So right here we have our suspicion meter. Once it goes all the way to 100, we get wanted level one. The guards will start searching for us and we have to give back stolen goods, let's say. Very similar to the system in Skyrim. But uh, I'm just gonna take some cloth right here, which we can use to craft new items. So then we launder the cloth. You you get where I'm going? I mean, so many possibilities. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna check out more things. And in the very left of the screen, we also have the new hemp resource, which we can pick up right here. So you wanna keep your eyes open, just hover with your mouse over all the different elements you can find because this behind the wall is almost impossible to see. So the game is filled with secrets. Anyways, we don't need an extra horse right now. We're just gonna leave this place. Also interact with everything you find during your adventures, like this little barrel right here. If you click on it, there is even more cloth, which we can use to craft new armor, torches, etc. But this is where you want to go to first. Stromkap is a village, like one of the most important villages in the game, as it's very central on the map. Later on, you can even make a trade route to this place so you can quick travel to different villages. But here we have different places which we can visit. The forge, the town hall, where you can pick up some quests, the market, where you can trade goods, apothecary clinic, where you can heal your members when they become wounded. And now we can even assign Aragorn to become a healer himself, so he can craft medicine once we found more comfrays, the flowers which we pick up in the overworld. But um, I definitely recommend you to visit the apothecary clinic for a second, also go to the forge, as this allows you to interact with the forge itself, and then you can assign one of your members to become a blacksmith. So now if we right click on our characters, you can see that we have this plus icon and you can assign one of these jobs. Definitely recommend you to look at what kind of characters you have. Say, my ranger likes to have critical strike chance, so then dexterity would be interesting. So Dirge is my thief. Crixus needs strength. I mean, it's a warrior, so we want to make him the blacksmith of the crew, while Brunhilde could become an alchemist to also get dexterity. Well, there are more jobs which we can pick up along the way. Right now though, what we're gonna do is just pick up a couple of these raw materials and we're gonna sell uh, this dagger. So we made a little bit of money with the stuff we sold at the blacksmith. Well, right now we wanna make more money with some side jobs or hustles. We can uh, interact with the emissary inside the inn. And if we press review right here, 
we can accept different types of jobs where we have to take out a gang of bandits or explore something, escort people. There are so many different things. These are basically the daily quests in War Tales. They refresh every day. So I'm just going to take this quad and we're also going to take this one. Later on, you will can even get better rates for the jobs you do. You can do a lot more in the inn. For example, interact with the people inside it. Like this guy, we can recruit him for a little bit of influence and money. You can also inspect him by clicking on this button. Well, this can also be done if you just instantly right click basically on any character in the game. So this guy is quick, movement speed increased and also stocky. So it would be a pretty nice one. Well, it's not perfect for rogues. This guy right here is brawny, so increased constitution while it's an assassin, so you don't want to have these perks. But just keep your eyes open for the perfect companion. You will find it one day, and then you can recruit it for some influence. Influence can be used to recruit new companions, do a lot more in the game. Basically, get it when you do good stuff, like completing quests and um, rescuing people. But we can also talk to the innkeeper. This guy will allow us to rest without having to deploy camp, let's say. You will deplete your fatigue meter and you will have to set up camp, which we're going to do in a second. So let's just leave the inn. If you're lacking some resources, by the way, for crafting items, you can always um, visit the market. You will find plenty of food uh, or salt, which you're going to need for cooking right here. But um, now we're just going to leave the place. And we're going to start moving towards the southeast. The more you progress in the game, by the way, you will unlock knowledge. Knowledge is primarily when you discover new points of interest. And we're going to use our first knowledge point to unlock sprint or run. This is probably the most important thing to focus on first, as right now we can just press and hold shift. Definitely make sure to always be on the roads in the early game, as this will make it easier to travel as well. We also just found a skull of fish. So what we're going to do first is open up the camp right here, go to our workshop. So one of our guys has to be assigned as tinkerer. So let's just quickly make Dirge a tinkerer. Very important. If you switch professions by right clicking this one, you will lose the experience gained on them. So you want to make sure that at a certain point you have a certain guy for a certain task. You don't want to constantly swap. As the higher level of the profession, the more advantages it will give as well. So now we're going to craft a couple of fish hooks. Let's go with uh, three. I'm also going to craft a couple of lockpicks. And look at that. Every time when we craft something new, we will also gain knowledge points. So now with these knowledge points, we can unlock more right here restoration. So we can repair armor with less tools. Uh, we can make saddlebags so our horse can carry more. And I'm also going to take career plans right here. Very important knowledge as this allows us to upgrade our characters much more efficiently. So now we can leave the camp, which by default is C, by the way. And we're going to press on this fishing school. Brunhilde is our fisherman. Or Well, let's make Aragorn our fisherman. That would make a lot more sense. Brunhilde should be our blacksmith. So Aragorn is our fisherman. Now we just click. And then we just spam click to keep the fish icon in the middle. You don't want to go into the red zone. And bam, there we have it. We just caught our first fish. After every three fishies, your hook will basically break. While later game, you will be able to um, craft stronger fish hooks. And you can even catch multiple fish with certain upgrades. Also, when you reach a higher level of fishermen. This is like free food, which you can use during a rest which we're going to have to do right now. But first, I'm going to visit the jail. So inside the jail, we can also recruit companions. These usually have some pretty bad traits, though. Like volunteer, reduce the wages, which is nice. But he also eats more food. And he's also depressed. So, mm, not very interesting. This guy is clever, so he earns more experience. But it's also a pickpocket. It's going to cost us more wages. And it's also a drunkard. So you don't want to get these troublemakers into your party. Very rare occasions, you will find like bears and wolves in here, which you can also recruit. They look cool, but I don't recommend you to do this as you can catch them yourself. And that is what we're going to do when we take prisoners. So I'm going to take four chains right here. Oh, I actually bought five. That's fine. 
we will multiply the investment, ladies and gentlemen. This is like 100 gold gone, but every guy we capture will give us like 50, 60 gold at the beginning and over 100 gold mid to late game. We're also going to take like 10 ropes, which we can use to um, capture animals and craft pythons, which are very powerful in the game to quick travel from A to B, like skill terrain a lot easier. Next up, we have the camp. So um, we already visited this one quickly to uh, make a couple of hooks and lockpicks. But right now we want to rest as our fatigue meter is empty. We just want to right click the campfire. Be sure to assign everybody to the campfire if you have people walking around here still. So uh, basically, if you do that, you will get more happiness. At the end of the video, I will show you a mid to end game camp with all the upgrades or most of them basically, which you can unlock things you want to focus on to get your hands on first. So now we just right click the camp. We throw some food on it. Make sure that you don't go over the limit. We only need to have 18 in there. And then we want to make sure that we have danger level none. So don't rest close to enemies or creatures be on the road even, if possible. That will reduce the risk. And every couple of days, you also have to pay wages to your companions. So you want to make sure you have money with you all the times. So right now, we're pretty broke, but we're going to make changes to that. As right now, we're going to do hunting. So we've got a couple of boars right here. I'm just going to press and hold my shift to escape from the piggies. I mean, if you don't have the sprint early game, it absolutely sucks because then you are not able to escape from that situation. The boards will simply outrun you. So now we're just going to quickly save the game right here. Right here we also have a couple guys who want to fight with us, which we're going to deal with. I don't think I have to explain the combat once again, so I'm just going to quickly resolve it so we can continue the guide. Look at that, we got a buckler of the guards. We're just going to loot everything. Aragorn also leveled up. We're going to quickly repair. You don't want to take the human remains with you just yet. I mean, after some time, you can eat corpses. Man, I'm saying too much. But um, right click on Aragorn. We can level him up with the aptitude points. Since we took knowledge, like this one, career plans, you can spend influence to add plus one to an aptitude when leveling up. So right here, it says plus two constitution, which sucks, or plus one critical hit. So what we can do is press career plans and click on the dexterity. So now instead of one dex, we get two dex. So we increase the power with one level by just spending 10 influence points. So you wanna focus on this, especially because some characters will not even have the chance to choose the attribute you wanna go for. So then with career plans, you fix that. It will cost a little bit more of that influence, but in the long run, trust me, you will have the best possible build on the attributes for your character and important you cannot reroll the attribute points so you want to get the best out of the character building while you're at it since we're level two we now also get to choose a passive ability for our character so we can gain some valor points if we're standing next to a character who is not engaged in combat we can get valor points where we kill an enemy while early game it's pretty difficult to kill them right away so what i'm gonna do is take valorous support this is a very nice one for pretty much every character in the game as most of the times you're standing close to each other to support each other gain bonuses with damage also with tankiness so basically if you end your turn next to an ally if you're not engaged in combat you will gain one of those points which is very good the more you level up, the more you will be able to customize your character, but specializations can be reset. So don't worry too much about this. Recommend you to be creative and just try what you think is cool. And if you want to change your companion who's standing in the front, just drag and drop them to the front. Right now we've got Crixis and Brunhilde walking as first. So with a cool shield, we are now in the front line. <laughs> I, I like this little detail. Anyways, into the mine. Now we get to uh, interact with this guy and he says that we're not just able to walk into the mine while well, we can threaten him. This will increase our suspicion, not recommended, but we can also persuade him with uh, the influence which we gain when resolving combat or helping people out. So I'm just going to persuade as you wish. So now we are allowed to do stuff in the mine. Once again, hoover with your mouse over everything. So here we can see iron, iron pickup. 
And also this right here, we can steal some salt. So now we can assign characters to become a miner. I think I'm going to keep Crixus a blacksmith while Brunhilde should become miner because it increases the constitution, so more HP. So now she can just mine this away. You basically want to just click when the two circles are on the same spot. And there we go. We get to nine iron. You can do this every couple days. I think every half a month the iron will replenish so you will be able to revisit the mine and mine the iron once again and the higher level your mining becomes see you can discover precious stones while mining so it just happened i don't even have to explain it anymore fantastic but right here we've got a farm more stuff to interact with i'm gonna keep things short but here we have wood so we can do some wood cutting and we can basically do the same kind of mini game so now we are just chopping the logs and we can use this wood later on to craft things in our base, like uh, upgrading our camp equipment or making firewood to keep our lads happy. So uh, we just picked up the wood. You can also sell it, by the way. And we also want to search around once again with our mouse. See, we find some hemp. And there, we also have a chest. And we can use the lockpicks, which we crafted earlier in the camp to open up this chest. This, once again, a mini game, I think heavily inspired on that from Skyrim. It's a good one, so why not take it to your game as well, right? So you're gonna search where you will have the most movement um, with the lockpick. I recommend you to just click once, very short, and the further you can move it, the less probable it will be to break it. And there we go, we find some wine, which we can add to our campfire to get some extra happiness. We can uh, loot the cloth right here, all that kind of stuff. So uh, there we have it, some extra treasure. If you don't break your lockpicks, you can keep them. While if you break them, you will lose them forever. So definitely be careful with it. You can always just escape, save. Literally took me a millisecond to do that. Since we're not yet wanted, this is a guard. So they're not really going after us. You don't want to worry about that too much. While if your wanted level goes up, you want to be careful for those stars. And these are bandits. So we're going to interact with them. Shoot this guy in the back. Oh, perfect. Right now, he is only at one HP. So that means the chances of catching them with the chains to turn them into prison is going to be very high. So a new round is starting. If our character is not engaged in combat, is, is standing next or behind one that is, we can use the knockout ability. Success rate 100%. Floops. And we capture the enemy. Final one right here is Dirge. Whoops, get behind it. 87% chance and that's our third prisoner caught. This will already pay back what we spent on the chains themselves. So we're just going to repair all the damages done, heal with the medicine and loot all the stuff right here. Brunhilde also leveled up so we can choose a talent. I'm going to take Destroyer so she can add a weakening blow. Uh, Constitution only has one plus. I'm going to do the career plans so now she has a lot more of that and we've got three guys in our camp very important now we're gonna rest and these guys also have a chance to break away from your crew they have escape ability now it's pretty low because they are injured but after some days in your camp without being in chains they can run away so you want to have some camp upgrades which we're going to talk about later before we're gonna rest though, I'm quickly gonna check out the Stromcap Mill as this is where we can find a free companion. So uh, here we've got some hemp growing, we've got some things we can inspect, just loot everything which we can find right here, some money. So that's gonna be awesome. Sweet, we also have a barrel. And behind the barrel, we've got a secret, look at that. Work manual, more money. If we read this, we get some uh, extra knowledge so we can use that to further upgrade make more progression with our crew. But then we can also talk to Hackert right here. We're gonna heal this guy. We can also finish him to get some money. But if you heal him with some medicine, he will join your crew. So then you will have an extra crew member. He will instantly level up to two. And we have an extra dagger right here. So we can give it to him so we can deal more damage. 
all characters should have a little bit of extra base movement, so it's going to be a lot easier for them to escape during combat or, of course, engage on enemies which are a lot further away, especially archers, which can be a pain in turn-based combat. Of course, stealing also comes with a price, and I had extreme bad luck for the guards to spawn very close to me. So right now, they want me to return the stolen goods or pay some taxes. We can also fight them, which I don't recommend you to do early game, as these can obliterate you. I mean, look at their maces. If you look at my guys, they are literally in racks with some uh, barrel lids, so these are probably going to destroy my crew. So then it would be just wise to pay for the stolen goods. You can also return them. But this would also return stolen equipment if you have that on your character. So I'm just going to pay the taxes. 28, is that that much? So now we're cool. I'm just going to press camp to rest a little bit. I'm just going to right click this thing. And we're going to throw in some alcohol. Why not? There ain't no party like an alcoholic party, right? <laughs> no, but seriously. Since we have all these... Um, prisoners in our crew we also have to feed them which kind of sucks so you want to make sure you turn them in before you have to rest let's say anyways new day new opportunities so we're just gonna pick up all the goodies right here i mean the more you travel around in the world the more knowledge points you will unlock and um, the more you can invest in making your crew a lot stronger uh, we've got some more bandits right here um, i'm just gonna use my sprint to outrun them a neat way to escape from the guard, by the way, is to stay inside the forest. So right now you can see that my characters have these blue outlines. So that means I am pretty much invisible from the guard. They won't be able to spot me here. While inside the forest, you can also come across enemies. Like, for example, here we've got a group of bandits, which we don't want to interact with right now. I mean, we can deal with them, but since we already have a couple bandits in chains, I first want to hand them over to the prison. So it's currently day five, we're almost at the prison and it says like 4am, you're gonna have to place camp, you're gonna have to do some resting right here. But um, we still have a little bit of time to reach our goal, let's say. It will dramatically reduce your movement speed, but if we quickly visit the prison before we rest, we can get of course our reward. So we're gonna hand over prisoner one, that's 55. Another times 55 and another times. Look at that. Right now we've got 200 crowns. You don't have to go for new chains as you basically get the chains back after selling them. So we just did a little bit of resting. As you can see, when we click on the campfire right now, we only have a couple snacks left. So it's very important to constantly be on the hunt for food. If you don't hunt for animals, you're gonna get in trouble. If you don't do fishing, you're gonna get into trouble as well. While you also wanna do enough hunting for mercenaries, for bad guys, to turn them into prison, to gain extra coins, as next time we have to pay our wages to keep our guys happy, which costs 90 for the size of our current crew, which is almost half of the money we've earned today. So on higher difficulty, it will definitely be more difficult to uh, maintain all this. While as long as you keep hunting for these guys, you'll be totally fine. And of course, sell the excess goods you come across. But this is basically what the camp would look like after a little bit of progression. So we've got our stocks right here, where you can hang prisoners so they cannot escape. Right here we also have a watch keeping stool where Hey Bill is just looking at the rest of the prisoners so they can't escape while it will also reduce the chances of getting attacked during a rest. Right here we also have Van Cleef who is currently at my banner. So if we click on this this will basically give you bonuses if you spend influence which will last until the next rest. To increase carrying capacity so you can loot a lot in the world or increase your combat experience get more uh, items when gathering stuff gain more experience there is just so much you can do with this game and the funny thing is i saw people making reviews about war tales after they've played it for like three to five hours and the better you can only unlock this one after an x amount of hours so this is literally where the game starts to become interesting in the mid to late game and yeah we also have a cooking pot right here where you can make your own dishes bread grilled pork sausages and down here we also have cooked meals which all add unique effects bonuses to your crew increase your critical damage or uh, your renderation 
I think I already made it pretty clear that you won't be able to play this game for just a couple hours. A lectern is also one of those things which you need in the Tomb of the Ancient to research antiquities, unlock some legendary weapons and armor, let's say. Uh, we also have the meat drying rack, where you can produce snacks, or a tanning rack, in which you can throw carcasses as well to produce leather, also a gurney if some of your crewmates get injured. We also have a beehive where you can produce honey, a dice thing where we can just add these two guys and they will start playing games, increase their happiness. But yeah, blueprints to unlocking all this camp equipment can be unlocked during your playthrough when visiting certain areas in the entire world of War Tales. They have fixed locations, but I'm not going to share where exactly. I'm always happy to answer questions in the comments down below. But um, yeah, if we have a quick look at the knowledge right here, there are so many ways in which you can customize your crew, uh, make it more powerful with the workshop upgrades. You can also make so many more items with your tinkerer's table, make some new weapons and armor, all different types of dishes, oils to make your weapons more powerful, research runes. Aside from the knowledge tab, we also have the paths, which are also pretty important. Like the more you do different things in the game, the more you will unlock these PP. If you spend those points, you can further customize whatever you want to focus on in the game. Do you want to focus on trading? Cool. You can unlock a trading post and this is where you will be able to store items and quick travel to another location. So this village right here, I can click on the Drumbach travel post and I can just interact with this guy right here or well, the lady and I can press travel. I can just quick travel to another location. So um, if I go to Gozenberg, it would cost me quite some food because it's a pretty long journey. It will take about a day and 12 hours. I also have to pay some goods. If we have a quick look at Godric, the Deft right here, which is my level nine destroyer, not even maximum level from the early access, you can tell that he has a pretty epic loadout, like a legendary weapon, some nice uh, armor and a shield. We've got um, a ton of abilities and passives right here as well. So he can use different abilities like a shield slam that can put enemies ablaze, he can execute enemies, while he also has a ton of traits unlocked. Normally you only have two bonus traits and one negative trait from the start. Well, if you look at this list right here, wow. I mean, you can unlock all these based on different things you do in the game. And these are different for every character I have. So that's what I really like about this. You can also even apply war paint. But uh, yeah, they have different abilities. They can also have relationships with each other. They can become best friends when very close to others. You can make enemies vulnerable at level 5 with a deadly contract. You can see that I have a lot of dexterity right here. My crit chance is almost 50%. But yeah, the more hours you spend in your playthrough, the more you will level up, the more you will progress and unlock, the more interesting War Tales becomes. I mean, look at all the different things I can craft right here. And um, we haven't even talked about all the professions yet. Let's quickly go over that as final thing to wrap up this video. So um, Van Cleef is a blacksmith. So you can tell that on this level, he gets more things. So now we can also craft apprentice and experience rank items. The first one I have right here is Bard, which allows you to learn songs and also sing them in taverns to gain extra crowns and influence when resting in little villages. Then we also have the Scholar, which allows you to decipher codices and also uh, research piece together antiquities at the lectern, which is something you will unlock after you've visited some runes. So this is one of the camp equipment pieces you can um, interact with. As angler, you can basically catch fish and the higher the level your angler is, the more fish you can catch. Some items will even allow you to catch additional loot. With a tinkerer, you will craft recipes at the workstation. Very simple. Give it to one of your guys who wants to have some extra critical hit chance. Cook can make recipes. The higher level the cook, the better these recipes become, so you can restore more food. The thief, of course, can steal items, do lockpicking, just like in Skyrim. Then we also have the alchemist to brew potions, as well as oils to make your weapons deal more damage or other effects. The blacksmith, of course, can craft weapons and armor. While we also have the miner right here, we've already seen that as well, to just mine some ore, which you're going to need for blacksmithing. And last but not least, we also have the question mark, 
This is the woodcutting, which we've checked earlier. You find these professions during your playthrough, so don't worry about them too much. There you have it. Everything you need to know to get started with War Tales. But yeah, if you have any more questions, suggestions for future videos. Do leave them in the comments down below. If you have questions about something in this guide, I'd love to hear as well. And yeah, if you found this video helpful in the first place, please do leave a like as it helps the channel big time. Very much appreciate it. And yes, Shira Games, big love for making this video possible. I generally enjoy 1.0 a lot, so I can't wait to share more with the community in the coming days, but Right now, it is 4am out. Have an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.